All right, so now let's uh, presume that we've actually, the product that we're selling is a premium newsletter, which I know sounds a little bit weird, um, but I actually think there's a real movement towards premium newsletters, and I think we're gonna see more of this over the next 12 to 18 months. Why? Because people are time poor. People don't wanna spend a lot of time on the internet researching information. They want someone they trust to deliver them actionable insights in one neat package, okay? So a newsletter can do a couple of things. It can service the customers that have bought it, and it can attract referrals if it's really good. An example I'll give you is Market Beat, which is um, run by a guy named Matt Paulson. Matt Paulson, there you go. Market Beat. Why did I look at you as if you have any idea? Mar I thought maybe you might know Matt from the old market days. Marketbeat.com. So this is a basically it's a stock market newsletter, and it's a, he's got a free newsletter and he's got a paid newsletter. We also have a, uh, we have a couple of newsletters. We have a free newsletter that goes out every Thursday called WordPress Wednesday, just to keep them on their toes. That's a time zone thing. And we have a Monday Digest go that goes out to all of our actual paying customers. And this is quite a detailed process because you cannot sell a premium newsletter subscription to someone and then just put an RSS feed into MailChimp and send that out. Because it's gonna look terrible it's not going to be formatted right, and there's going to be no actionable insights in that newsletter. So I'm not talking about syncing up an RSS feed into MailChimp. But there's a more detailed process that goes on, and I'll walk you through how we do it. So the first thing you need to do is collect headlines. So whatever your niche is, whatever your specialty is, just put yourself in the headspace now that you've got, you know, a thousand customers paying you $47 a month for a weekly newsletter that gives them actionable insights into whatever it is, right? Might be parenting, might be, you know, bookkeeping, might be accounting, legal, whatever. The first thing you want to do is collect your headlines. So what is it that we're going to talk about? And I'll, I, I'll show you some tools later, but um, I just stick all my headlines in Evernote. I've just got a list of, like, things that I just want to talk about. Ideas. I'll get ideas today and I'll just park them in Evernote. And then you want to theme them, put them into some kind of theme. So you have some, you have like different categories in your newsletter, or each week might be a different theme, different category. Once your content is themed, what we then do is we schedule our content on a calendar. So we say, okay, on, you know, we've got a promotion coming up in October around XYZ, so we know that the three weeks leading up to that, we want to be talking about this. So then around that, we want to be talking about this and this. We don't want to be talking about the same thing all the time. We want to scatter our content out to make it interesting and engaging. So plan your, your content out on a calendar. Then you want to source great hero images. Because, and that might be the image that is attached to the article that you find on the internet. And it might not be. Because most images that are attached to articles on the internet either aren't great or they're not cropped well for your particular format. So you want to spend some time making sure your staff know what a great hero image looks like, uh, what good cropping looks like. You can take an image. You know, I, I, th I think the way that photos and the way that images are presented on the internet are probably the lowest hanging fruit for all of us to up our game. You know, I see, see a newsletter come out of our organisation with an image that's really badly cropped and it's a live event and there's some guy in the background with a beer like this you know, and it's like, you could have just zoomed that in by 5% and cropped him out and it would have looked so much better. So just pay attention to the way that your visuals are representing your brand. And you can systemize this and you can train your staff how to do this. Then you want to write an engaging excerpt. Don't rely on the RSS feed to give you a good excerpt. Right? Because unless you're just, you know, curating HubSpot articles, most blogs and most uh, online assets aren't going to have really well engaging written uh, excerpts. And an engaging excerpt is really, I mean, you, you guys know what this is about. It's designed to sell the click. It's designed to get them to click on the link and open it. And so one of the things, bear in mind, one of the things I'm talking about here is not actually sending out a newsletter of all your content, but actually curating some of your content and lots of other content from around the web and delivering that to your clients. So you just want to get people to click on the links and go through and read the articles, whether they're yours or someone else's. So make sure you write really engaging excerpts. And then, and this is absolutely key, write actionable takeaways. So here's this information that we've curated for you, but what does it actually mean? Mike did this really well in this morning's presentation. He gave you some actionable things to actually do over the next two weeks, right? He said, the system for creating systems. If there's only one thing you can do in the next two weeks, then start putting in place the system for creating systems. Start videoing everything you do. That's an actionable insight. 
The reason this matters is twofold. One, you're gonna remember this workshop more than other workshops if you actually go away and do something about it in your business. Two, the next time these guys run a workshop, you're gonna to wanna to come along because you've actually gotten some benefit in your business rather than just being entertained and had an information overload. So in a digital subscription model, an actionable takeaway will make your audience anticipate the next instalment, right? There's no better, no better example of this than if you subscribe to any bodybuilding or weight loss newsletter. So go and subscribe, just for shits and giggles, go and subscribe to any weight loss or bodybuilding newsletter, and if, if it's a good one, they'll give you actionable insights. So here's this ab crunch exercise that we found. Go and check this video out. You've got 14 days to nail this, and then we're gonna send you the next one, which is all about you know losing the jiggle, or you know tightening the thighs, or expanding the triceps, or whatever it is, right? They're all full of actionable insights. Because if you don't do anything with information, it loses value. Whereas if you do something with information, it increases value, and you anticipate the next instalment. So when you get it, you open it, and you're less likely to bounce and unsubscribe. <clears throat> and again, that kind of thing can be taught, it can be systemized and taught. Then you've got to build the newsletter. I'll show you a tool uh, later on that'll allow you to do this really quickly, but we do it the old school way. So we use WordPress, and we use advanced custom fields in the back end, and we lay all of our content out in all of the different fields, and that produces HTML, which we then copy and paste into Infusionsoft and send. It's not very elegant, but it kind of does the job. And finally, I think, you want to schedule the newsletter to actually go out. So you should never be writing an email newsletter the same day you're sending it. That's really bad form. If you're writing or curating content for an email newsletter that you're sending on the same day that you're sending it, then your system is broken. Like, never publish anything the same day you write it, which is really hard for me. Because, you know, I get an idea and I write it, and I just want to publish it straight away. Always sleep on it, edit it the next day, and then publish it. Or have someone else edit it and then publish it. And finally, you want to measure and optimize. So you want to be looking at your click-through rates, you want to be looking at your open rates, and you want to be continually improving the content you're putting out to increase your open rates and your click-through rates. Even if you're doing this for a free newsletter, the reason, I think the reason it's important to continually try and increase your open rates and click-through rates is you want to train your audience to click on the links that you send them. So that when you do send them a link to click on to come and buy tickets to a workshop, you get a room full of people because you've continued to add value over that time in between your promotional stuff, yeah? Uh, really important with a paid subscription too because you don't want people, I mean, I know there's this kind of myth that you get people to subscribe to your product and if half of them don't use it, it doesn't matter. Well, it kind of does. If half of them don't use it and it doesn't, if the half that are using it are more likely to refer their friends. So you want as many people as possible using your product because the referability increases. But also, you don't want people buying your product and not using it because that's just, that's just bad form for everyone. Now, there are a certain percentage of people that will just never go to the gym even though they've bought the membership, right? They're kind of weird. I don't know what's going on with them, but you can't change them. But you want to try and minimise that down as much as possible. You want people to engage with your product and get the benefit because it's great for, for virality and, and referability. Did I just use the word virality and referability in the same sentence? Oh dear, it's going to be a long day, isn't it? Music